but the viaduct is closing forever. Um, and that is a significant difference. In preparation for this and the run-up to this, SDOT has really worked very hard to be thinking about all contingencies. The Department Operations Center is the strategic location. That's where we handle sort of the broader response, as well as our broad-scale coordination with WashDOT, King County Metro Transit, the Port of Seattle, other partners. The Transportation Operations Center is a little different than the Department Operations Center. I think of it as a hub of information collection and observations. The TOC helps keep Seattle moving. The mission here at, at the Transportation Operations Center is to gather current traffic conditions, including incidents, uh, general traffic flows. So for us, the use of social media, the dynamic message signs, or DMS, the CCTV cameras, as well as the signal timing throughout the city has really helped keep traffic moving through the city of Seattle. The TOC currently interfaces with the DOC as part of the incident command structure. They did a bunch of big concrete pours yesterday. They've got some more coming up this week. We need to be delivering to the additional ops branch up in 3762. We are staffed up and ready to go tomorrow. What we know is if there are too many cars, the grid has a hard time absorbing it. Some people won't be able to take transit, so they have to drive to work. We understand that. The way that we're facilitating that is by paying attention to traffic signal timing patterns. If I see a backup, I check and make sure, is the system making good decisions? And if not, I can actually manually override them. We provide more green time to north-south streets because that's where the travel demand's typically going to show up uh, without the viaduct. In addition, we are implementing some parking restrictions that help facilitate both uh, buses so that buses can always be uh, that good choice and facilitate emergency vehicles. We uh, focused a lot on prioritizing transit reliability into and out of the downtown business district because that's going to move the most people. It's a lot of coordination and it's a lot of broadcasting information. We tweet. Uh, and you can follow us at s.traffic uh, on Twitter. What we want to do is kind of give drivers real-time information so they can kind of adapt and adjust their routes accordingly. And so what we'll do typically is take a quick snapshot, we'll post it on our Twitter account here, alerting drivers of what is the incident, um, what direction is going, blockage or things like that. We've not seen 90,000 vehicles just shift to the other streets, uh, thankfully, because that would just be a real, that would be a real bottleneck. My advice to commuters during this time is do what you've been doing. Flex your schedule, work from home if you can, use the water taxi, ride your bike, definitely use transit. Uh, try to avoid those standard commute times. The public has been listening and, and we uh, thank them very much for doing that. What we're looking forward to is removing that viaduct from our waterfront so that we can replace it with a beautiful waterfront promenade. This is that generational change that's going to connect Seattle back with our waterfront and with our maritime heritage. Mm -hmm.